Thank you for joining me today on this uh, quick little TAM Lab nano session. What I'm going to cover is the recent SD card USB device revised guidance, which is KB85685. Share my screen, it's going to show that. And in this guidance, it's basically talking about in the future versions of vSphere, um, as most of everyone has probably noticed in seven, there has been guidance that the support of SD card and USB devices may be going away or there has been a change. So that with the revised guidance, while SD cards and USB devices are supported for a boot uh, device, we highly recommend that you still change where like the persistent logs um, or the ESX OS data partition is located. And, and our guidance to be fully supported needs to be on some kind of persistent uh, drive beyond the USB or SD card. Um, what I'm gonna cover today is how you can actually back this up. Uh, if you are not using host profiles, you're thinking, well, now I've got to put in a, uh, some kind of drive that I can boot off of or move this and then I have to reset everything up. Using this KB, the 2042141, um, you can actually use PowerCLI, and that's what I'm gonna to use today to back up your host configuration. And then you can also restore it using PowerCLI. So, let me switch back over to my desktop or my jump box. Here we go. And in this scenario, uh, I have my uh, all host backup config and I just ran this. And you can see this is what the backup file looks like, you know, .tg or .tgz uh, file. Um, for every host. So there's my uh, NUC1, NUC2, NUC3, and my uh, actual uh, T01, which is a power edge uh, tower box. In this scenario, my NUCs 1, 2, and 3 are were uh, booting off of a USB drive. 2 and 3 I've already completed. Uh, 1 is the one I've got to do, and we're going to jump on and do that today. So let me switch my screen over again. We'll just go to, so in this scenario, I'm going to switch over to my vCenter and kind of prove what I'm doing. Um, one thing is I am on 70 update 3, which is this build number 19482537. 2 and 3 are actually on, oh. Uh, my bad. I said one initially. It's actually uh, one and two are done. I need to update three um, in this case. Uh, clean that up. But so this box, if we can look at the configure side of it, storage device. See, I'm on a 50, well, it says 58. It's like a 64 gig. Uh, USB drive. If I go to over to host two, it is on a almost two terabyte uh, drive that I had laying around. I actually have three of these drives, so that's what I'm going to use going forward. You can see one is the same way. So we're going to do host three and convert it. What I am going to have to do is I've already got the backup. And uh, on off camera, I am going to uh, remove the USB drive. I am going to put in my USB installer and hook up the uh, two terabyte drive. Um, and this is my home lab. This is not supported in production, but uh, I'm using a USB to SATA to connect those SATA drives. So, uh, but so far has worked flawlessly in my home lab. I've not had any issues. Um, and in this process, I don't have to set up uh, let me go back to three and we'll show the configuration of, so I've got vSAN, 
Everything is good. The networks, I'm on a uh, distributed switch, right? And here's all the networks for it. Um, so when I go install, I'm just gonna get to a basic ESX configuration of a uh, IP address and it's gonna be the default. I'm not gonna set up anything else beyond that, uh, except for the root password, obviously. I'm gonna connect, I'm gonna change that to the same thing I'm using right now. And the IP address will be the same just so I don't have to change any uh, configs. In my restore, all I'm gonna uh, change is, okay, I'm gonna change this to three. So you'll find that third file and obviously this. Um, so I can say, okay, I'm gonna load my uh, credentials that I've done in other videos. Um, and then it's gonna put the um, host, it's gonna put it in maintenance mode. And then it's gonna upload that restore config. So it's basically gonna upload this file and make all the changes for me. And then it should reboot the host and it'll come up looking just like it is now, except for it'll be on that other drive. So I'm gonna pause my video and go run out and do that. Okay, at this point, you can tell my ESX03 is not responding. It's actually, uh, I shut it down, went out there, removed the old USB device that I was booting off of, installed the, or uh, inserted the USB installer bootable device and installed to the uh, SATA drive. Um, I went out there and during the install, I just did the root password the same as what I was using and then just change the IP address from the default DHCP to the one that I'm using today uh, or we was using prior. So I'm gonna log in now to it. Since it's, uh, I don't wanna connect it because I'm gonna just restore the config and show you that I want to do anything in vCenter at this point. But I just wanna log in, show you, you know, uh, there's no virtual machine, there's no storage because obviously it, it when during the install, uh, and I'll show it, uh, here in a second, uh, it detected the two drives that I'm using for the vSAN storage, plus the USB to SATA drive and the USB installer file. Uh, but the default VM network, manager network, there's no uh, other uh, DVS. It's only seeing the one physical NIC, um, the one management and my IP address. So this is the default config um after changing the root password and just going to a stat static config that is all the changes i've made and what we're going to do now is on my restore here i'm going to actually change this because initially i thought i did two and three but i actually did one and two so i need to change this to three to three and then i'm going to save it and then run it So this script, it's uh, directly connecting to that host. As you can see here, it's update options. It is doing the restore. So restore firmware. Um, this is a, I'm, I'm finding a way to get rid of this, but basically once it's done, it reboots the host. So yeah, I dropped connection. The, the underlying connection was closed. So that's okay, that's understood kind of want to show that anyways, just to show what it does. So let's just go ahead and want to kind of like ping it just to show when it's up. The only thing I might have to do is if my install config or my installer file didn't have the uh, the USB fling driver, then I'll have to install that. Because if you look at host one and two here, configure virtual uh, physical adapters, 
Okay, so I still haven't done that. I need to do that on my uh, one and two, but I have a USB NIC as well that I need to install a driver's for, which is that USB fling. But as you can see, everything should look exactly the same once this comes up and finish boot. I'm not even gonna touch anything. I just wanna see it connect back up by itself. So we know it's back up. It's still booting the ESX. If anything, I may just have to refresh the screen. Okay, it's not up yet, but so using this setup, you could, uh, there's ways that you, know, you could clone the previous USB drive, uh, partition to all that stuff to the new drive. Um, I didn't want to go that route. Um, I really want to kind of do like a fresh install. I'm actually upgrading to a newer version of uh, vSphere um, than what was on there when I showed you guys earlier. I uh, showed everyone earlier that the version build numbers were different. It's still update three, but it's a different build number. The, uh, the issues was that my USB drives were kind of dying off and on. My home lab is not perfect by any means. My it is an environment that I wouldn't, like to get out of um, still I can't control the, the climate too well out there uh, but let's see what happens all right as you can see I just did a refresh on the vCenter and look my host is back up my VMs are now um, all showing accessible these templates uh, are for my linked clone or instant clones and I just need to kind of clean some of these up from some testing I've done but yeah I can actually power on actually let's get that log inside going that needs that needs that going right but so now i can go in here and look monitor right things it's not compliance i know i need to update it but if i go to storage devices now i've got the usb direct access which is that usb to sata drive um and it's the two almost two terabyte drive that was initially the 64 gig USB device, the virtual switches. So everything is there. Kernel, right? Physical adapter, yep. Uh, and then the data store. So I can actually go back into here and I'm gonna refresh this. It should log me out, yep. Log back in. Now look, my 21 virtual machines, my storage, my vSAN, my networking, everything's there. I didn't have to do anything except for restore the config. This was a very easy process. Hopefully this is useful for you. Um, again, thanks for viewing this TAM Lab Nano session.